Hello and welcome back to Coding with T. Today we are going to start the section 3 of our e-commerce admin panel. By watching this section 3, you will be able to master the e-commerce responsive design. And once you have watched the complete section, you will be able to create your own responsive websites, admin panels and anything inside Flutter web that will be 100% responsive. And you don't have to be worried about after watching this playlist for the responsive design. So make sure to watch all the videos. Link is in the description. First of all, let's quickly have a look what we are going to create. Okay, so I have created a design in the previous section, which was section two. We learned the routings and navigations, which was about the URLs and a lot of useful things. If you're new, you can watch the previous videos. Link is in the description. So for today's video, you can see, first of all, we are going to learn how you're going to design the responsiveness in Flutter. Once we know the responsiveness, then we are going to see how we can launch this responsiveness on different type of devices. So I have designed this six boxes. Currently, they are laid down in different columns and rows. So let's say when I'm going to shrink this and try to reach to the tablet mode, you can see this is the tablet mode when I'm going to trigger it. You can see this box five is taking the full space and box six will be as a separate next row. So let's trigger it and you can see this is the starting point of the tablet mode. So it will remain responsive in the tablet. And when it is going to trigger the phone mode, and you can see now it is in the phone size or the mobile size. So when I'm going to shrink this, it is working very fine. So Definitely later on, we are going to also cover the complex designs using this same approach, but this is going to be the very basic. So make sure to watch the video till end. Okay, so let's get started with today's tutorial. We will open Android Studio and inside the previous tutorials, we covered the routes. And for today's tutorial, because we are going to practice the responsive design. So I'm going to go for this app.dart and inside this app.dart as an initial route, I have created the initial route of this screen, which is responsive design screen, so that this screen will be appeared as a first screen when we are going to run our application. And inside this, it is a simple stateless widget class. And you can see we have a simple scaffold with a scroll view so that we can scroll in a vertical direction, then added some space around all the sides. And then I have created a row with three boxes one two and three boxes now how it is going to look like let's run the application and you can see we have three boxes with a specific height and they are not taking currently complete width so you can see it is not working as a responsive design so let's say we want to give a width to these boxes by giving a static width again this will not be a responsive design so let's try to give it a width let's say 200 each after giving the width let's save it let's see the design and you can see already it is giving error of 200 pixels on the right side because this is a static design and whenever it is going to touch its limits it is going to crash our application so this means that we cannot use static widths and height definitely we can use height because we have a scroll view but we cannot use a static width when it comes to the responsive design so to overcome this issue we are going to use the expanded and what this expanded or the flexible widget these two widgets are going to work only with the layout widgets layout widgets means that if you did not watch the crash course you can also watch the crash course i will drop the link in the description we covered each and everything in detail about types of widgets and a lot of other stuff so this row and column is the layout widgets so when we're going to talk about the expanded and the flexible widgets they can only be used with these type of widgets so because we are using already a row over here so i'm going to wrap this container it is simply a container that we created in our e-commerce app so don't worry about this one you can create any container just for the design and i'm going to wrap this with the expanded widget now what this expanded does this expanded is going to take all the available space because it is inside the row so it is going to take all the available space in the horizontal direction right not in the vertical direction and if it is in the column because column also do not have any specific height and if you have a scroll view this means that we do not have a bounded height and then using expanded inside a column is going to crash your application because there will be no limits in the y-axis so that was the reason now let's try to save it and you can see box one is currently taking 
the complete space with box 2 and 3 are not taking or they are only stick with the minimum space they required you can see the box 1 is now expanded which is which means it is flexible now and when i'm going to wrap rest of these boxes with the expanded let's save it now you can see box 1 2 and 3 are taking equal space this means that now our design is flexible but again it is not going to change its positions no matter what we are going to do with these expanded and flexibles it is not going to change their positions and also one more thing with these expanders we can add a flex property let's say i'm going to add a flex as two this means that this container should take more space than these two containers by default flex has a one value and you can see now flex two or the box two is going to take double space as compared to box one and three so whatever the size is it is going to take the double space of box one and three so this is how we use expanded and flexible to make our design responsive this is going to play a lot of or the huge part while creating and designing responsive apps now let me again create the design which was in the example before which is a bit complex design then we're going to talk about it and as you can see design is created and it's visible we have six boxes we're going to discuss it but the way it is created first of all okay so this this design is laid out in a column so first one is the column from top to bottom then in the column we have two rows this one is the first row and then the second one is over here so we have two rows and if we talk about the first row which is this one from box one to box four this row contains two sections the first is a simple box and then again as a second section we have a column with the box two and a row inside that row we have box three and box four so this is how we designed our boxes now when i'm going to reduce the size or shrink the size you can notice it's not actually changing but it is responsive for all the devices this is the mobile size then the desktop sorry the tablet and the desktop so it is currently working for all the size but we want to definitely change the position of these with using a layout builder and we want to use layout builder as a reusable widget so that we do not have to use that layout builder again and again so let's first come over here this is the design that we want to change this is the column that we want to change so i'm going to click on right click go to refactor and extract it as a flutter widget or the extract it as a method it's all up to you i'm going to name it desktop now we have that widget completed over here no we're not directly going to use the desktop over here but i'm going to use as a child a widget called layout builder so we're going to use this builder to lay out our design in different manners so inside the layout builder we have a builder property so we're going to build something using this builder it requires two things if you hover over it you can see first we have to provide the context and then we have the box constraints so because we do not need to use the context over here and the second thing is important which is the constraints now inside this builder we have to return a widget so we are going to develop or build a responsive design over here using these constraints these are the constraints of the current screen which has appeared right in front of us so i'm going to add an if statement if constraints dot max width we are not dealing with the height here we are dealing with the width so i'm saying constraints dot max width let's say if it is greater and equal to 1300 then i want to return the widget which is the desktop widget that we have already created which is over here and in the else let's say i want to create simply a center widget because we have not yet created tablet and mobile versions so the first one is going to return the desktop and the second one is going to return again a widget but a center widget we forget to add a return over here so now all the errors are gone now let's try to run our application and currently we can see our design because i think the pixels are currently or the width of this browser is currently having 1100 greater than that so let's try to reduce this and yes it's triggering you can see when it is going to automatically detect the screen size when it is going to trigger the if statement which is below than 1100 then it is going to display as the second design or the next design now let me quickly create mobile and the tablet designs as well 
Okay, I've created desktop, tablet, and mobile. In the tablet, what I have changed is I did not change anything in the first row, but in the second row, I just remove the row from the row to column. So you can see it's a column now. And also, I have just removed the expanded because we are not going to expand vertically. We have a static height, and I'm going to give the width as double dot infinity. This is again going to take the complete width to this container, and again. For this container, it is an infinity as a width, height is 190. But for the mobile version, if you see over here, I have I'm only using this one column, one single column. I removed all the expanded, all the child columns and rows, and right inside this column, I have added a simple container with the height, width will be infinity, means to cover all the available space, and then we have this space for all the containers, right? So let's save it. But first, before running this, inside our layout builder, we are returning a desktop over here and same way we have to define all the other sizes. Likewise for the tablet and mobile. Because I have added some of these values over here. If constraints.max width is greater than 1366, this is the ideal size of the desktop. Then we want to display the desktop and if it is not the case, for the tablet we are going to check between the desktop and between the mobile. So we're going to say if max width is less than the desktop, it is under the desktop and it is greater than the size of the tablet. This means that it is, it will be inside the tablet from below the desktop and inside the tablet. So this is the size of the tablet Then we want to display it. In else case, we want to display the mobile. So let's save it. So we have the desktop design and then I'm going to reduce it to tablet. And you can see when it is going to trigger the size of the tablet and I'm going to change the design to tablet one and then I'm going to again reduce this to mobile and you can see when it reaches to the mobile size or below than 768 it is going to turn to this mobile device and then after that we can really scroll it now so far we are done with this layout builder and if you have any questions feel free to ask me now I want to use this layout builder as a reusable widget so that I do not have to be worried ab about the layouts again and again because we have to design and we have to focus on developing our other classes. So for that I am going to create this as a separate widget. Let me quickly do that. Okay, I have created that inside the common into the widgets and you can see a folder which is the responsive folder because they are going to be used throughout in our application. So that's why they are inside the common widgets. And then in the responsive folder, I have created this design as a responsive design and I've named it T responsive widget, added some of the comments. It is a simple stateless widget. And instead of providing the hard coded values like the hard coded desktop, tablet and mobile because it has to return one of these things. So I have added a desktop, tablet and mobile over here and I have created these three widgets, desktop, tablet and mobile. These are the widgets and these all are required widgets. Whenever we're going to use this class, we have to provide these three things, tablet, desktop and mobile. Now, if we open this app and we do not want to use this layout builder and I'm going to use this T responsive widget and inside you can see we have to provide these three things. First one is the desktop and then we have the tablet and a mobile. We can make it a constant and you can see we can use this T responsive widget to use our desktop, tablet and mobile. But if we talk about the real applications, in those applications we have to stick with our desktop layout, with the tablet layout and with the mobile layout. You can see this complete e-commerce admin panel that we are going to create. You can see we have the top nav bar, then we have at the left side we have the sidebar and then in the center we have a body of each screen. So this is the layout for the desktop and then we are going to turn it to the tablet mode. You can see this text of this user, name and email. And in the tablet mode, search box is also removed and reached towards as an icon. Then we have also the sidebar removed in the tablet and we have a button over here. So this means that we have to create these layouts for mobile, laptop and tablet. And then after that, we can easily pass all the data to our users and you can see from this top nav bar also that user details are gone. So this is what we're going to create the designs of different devices. 
or the layouts of different devices in the next tutorial so that's it for today's tutorial i hope you learned something new and if you learn something new please make sure to like this video and if you have any questions you can ask me down below in the comments once again thank you for watching take care